here, everybody. Come on, let's stand up on our feet. Let's be grateful for all that God's given us. Come on, here we go.
after this next song. Hopefully you got a, a cup and juice on the way in. If not, we have some in the back and our ushers will bring some down. But let's just prepare our hearts today. We have so much to be grateful for and so much to bless God about. So let's sing this song out with passion, with belief, with purpose today. stories that have proved your faithfulness I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend there is beauty in what I can't understand and Jesus it's you Jesus it's you come on lift it up and I believe you're the one who I've seen you're too good to not believe you're the one who work in God and you heal because you love all oh, the miracles I'll see you're too good to not believe too good to not believe too good to not believe yeah and I can't Just the mention of your name, girl. Come on, we believe it today.
I love worshiping the Lord with you and coming into these moments and taking the focus off of ourself for just a moment. There's something special that happens in the presence of God. I'm convinced you don't need another sermon today. You don't need more worship music. What all of us need is one moment in the presence of God, because that is where everything begins to change. And some of you walked in the room today and man, it's already been a rough start to the year. And you're like, can we just go back two days and press restart on the new year? And you're walking in with a really heavy burden, a discouragement, a frustration. Somebody's watching right now online and man, that's exactly where you're at. Others of you, it's been great. Like, hey, this is a great start. Here's what I know, wherever you fall in that line, listen to my voice today. You don't need another message. You need a moment in the presence of Jesus. That's what all of us need. So right here, I wonder if you would just lay aside all the thoughts of the week, all the dreams for the new year, and you would just focus on what God has for you today. A great way to start the year, a great way to do that is to be reminded of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And I really can't think of a better way to begin the new year than for all of us to receive communion together. When you walked in the room just a moment ago, you were handed this cup and the juice is in the bottom, which represents the blood of Jesus. And the top is the wafer, which represents the body of Jesus that was broken for us. And as we begin this new season together, Paul in the book of Corinthians, he's writing to the church in Corinth and he's giving them some examples of, hey, when you take communion together as a church, here's the practice. And he encourages them to take a moment before they go any further, before they receive communion and just to do some introspection, if you will, just to see your heart. So right where you are today, before we go any further, why don't you do that? Take a moment, ask God to reveal some things in your heart, in your life. Do that now. I love the promise, God, you give us that when we draw near to you, that you draw near to us. So that's what we're doing in this moment. You're speaking to us, you're revealing some things to us. And I pray this over the people of Trinity Church that we would just shed those things today. That we wouldn't pick them up when we leave, that they would stay here on the floor. That this is the year we walk in victory. This is the year we walk in freedom. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you speak to us right now? Oh, we give you this moment and we hold nothing back. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he's in the upper room with his disciples and he takes the bread on the table and he breaks it. And he says, this is a picture of my body, which was broken for you. Take this in remembrance of me. So church, let's eat of the bread together. And in in the same way, he took the wine and he began to pour it out. He says, this is a picture of my blood, which is poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. So let's drink of the juice together. Pray with me one more time, church. So today, God, we thank you. Thank you for loving us first and loving us best. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sin, a payment that we could never pay ourselves. And thank you that three days later, he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And so today, God, you have a plan and you have a purpose for each and every one of us. So I thank you for every person that's in this room. Nobody's here on accident. Nobody's tuning in online on accident, God. You have us right where you want us today. And so as you speak, we say yes. And again, we hold nothing back. Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray for fresh revelation that you would open up heaven over every home, over every row, and you would speak so clearly to us 
today. In fact, we thank you in advance for what you're gonna do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hey, well, good morning, church. I am so thankful that you are with us today and, and welcome to Trinity Church. If this is the first time you're ever hanging out with us here, let me introduce myself. My name is Jared. I serve here as the lead pastor and I'm so grateful that you're taking time out of your weekend to be with us online. Huge shout out to you. Thanks for being with us today. In fact, church, come on. Let's welcome everybody online right now. So glad you're with us. If you're a guest online sometime this morning during the service, take a moment, fill out that connection card. I promise the hassle-free guarantee we're never gonna show up at your house. Um, if you like today's service, we're simply gonna give you an email giving you some really clear next steps of what to do around here at Trinity Church, introducing you to, some, to a few people. But more than anything, our prayer is that your first time, it won't be your last time. And let me be one of the first people to tell you, Happy New Year. Um, you are here today. You have perfect church attendance for the year. Like that's pretty important. So way to go. <laughs> you're on, you are on your, you're on your way. Um, but before we go any further, um, I'm just convinced that the friendliest people in all of Arizona are hanging out in the room this morning. Uh, so turn around, greet somebody you don't know, give them a handshake, a high five, a fist bump, and welcome somebody today to church. We're glad you're here. Welcome. and I'm the Associate Family Pastor here at Trinity. And we are so glad to have you join us today. If this is your first time, we would love to hear from you. Fill out the connection card from the bulletin or in the Trinity app. If you haven't downloaded the Trinity app, just search Trinity Mesa in the app store. You can find sermon notes, ways to get connected, and so much more. Today, during our 11 a.m. service, we will be offering step one of the growth track. The growth track is designed to help you learn more about the church, how to grow in your relationship with God, and how you can reach your full potential. You can join at any time and can make up any weeks you may have missed. Our next Young Adults Gathering is tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. The Young Adults Ministry is for 18 to 30 year olds to help find friends, establish community, and grow in relationship with God. For more information and to stay up to date, check us out on Instagram. We can't wait to see you there. Make plans to join us for our annual men's barbecue on January 15th from 4.30 to 8 p.m. The cost is $5. This one night event is for men of all ages. Invite a friend to experience great food, fun games, incredible giveaways, a car show, powerful worship, and a message from our good friend, Steve Artiburn. The grand prize giveaway is a Traeger grill and everyone in attendance will receive Steve Artiburn's latest book. Sign up at trinitymesa.church slash barbecue. Hey, well, welcome again, everybody today. I'm so glad that you're with us for a brand new series that we're calling Five Words that will change your life. Uh, but before we dive into this new sermon series, let me just kind of lend my voice to what Pastor Erica just talked about through some of the announcements. And let's start with this one. Um, hey guys, Men's Barbecue, um, get your tickets. You don't wanna miss it. It's gonna be an incredible night, free giveaway, and the Traeger Grill is out there. If you sign up, you bring a friend, you're automatically registered um, for that. It's gonna be a fun night. But most importantly, our really good friend, Steve Arterburn. Um, if you don't know who he is, he He's the guy who wrote Every Man's Battle, Every Young Man's Battle, Healing is a Choice. 
uh, how to take your life back. Uh, he's written a new book recently called The Soul of a Hero, um, which is uh, becoming the man that God's called you to be. Everybody will get a free copy of that book. And the good news is, ladies, if you're going to miss out from the men's barbecue, he will be speaking um, the next Sunday, January 16th. He'll be live with us in the room. And I'm so excited for, for that season, that weekend together at church. And before we go any further, I do want to just say, um, like Christmas at Trinity was amazing, off the charts, incredible crowds, um, just bl blown away by all that God did here, um, that, those three services. Um, most importantly, um, blown away that over a dozen people gave their life to Jesus, um, that, those three services. Isn't that amazing? We're so excited about that. So many hands were in the air saying, yes, I'm going to trust Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And so thank you for giving. Thank you for serving. Thank you for making this an incredible space um, where people can accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And I'm just so thankful to be on this journey with you. And I do, I wanna give you an update. So many people have been asking. Now, if you're a guest today, let, let me just kind of tell you, two, two months ago, we started a journey called the One Life Movement. Um, it's where together as a church, we declare that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And all of us are taking steps in our life to declare that. But together as a church, we're on a journey for the next two years to accomplish three God-sized goals together. Uh, first, we're gonna launch a brand new Trinity Church campus in East Mesa at the Gateway Polytech Academy right there on Signal View in Ray Road, the fastest growing area of our city. We believe God's asking us to go, um, to reach more people for Jesus. Also, while we do that, we're gonna update and we're gonna remodel the current campus, the current facility that you're in right now. So when people drive by, they know it's a church, we're gonna modernize things, bring it up to 2025 standards. We're gonna, we're gonna be able to do that. And also, because we're a giving church, we're not just focused on ourself, um, we are going to go plant churches um, in the unreached areas of the world. And so for order for all, all those things to happen, we gave you a vision a $3.5 million over the next two years. And I haven't given you an update on this, but beginning of the year, now here's the thing. I finished this Wednesday thinking we're safe, but it's never safe because more commitments have come in. So this is where we were as of Wednesday and we'll keep on updating it as we go. Um, and by the way, we are blown away from where we are. Thinking of, of it's a two year journey, the goal over and above what we normally give, um, what you guys have committed and what you've given so far has blown us away. So let me just give you the update. So far, 182 families have made a commitment. The total is 2.7, almost $2.8 million has been committed over and above our normal giving. Praise God for that. This is, again, this is a two year journey. Said, so, well, Jared, the goal was 3.5 million over two years. This is beyond where we thought that we would be after the first two, two months. But here's what shocked us. I mean, honestly, so far, what has been given so far, ready for this? It's $1.35 million has already been given to the One Life Movement. That's more than half of the commitments that have come in in the first two months of this journey, of this journey together. And so we're taking a moment and we're praising God. And so some of you are like, so what does that mean? So already we are beginning to purchase everything that we need for East Mesa. You've, you've heard of this thing called the supply chain shortage or whatever's going on. We don't wanna get caught in the middle of that. So we say, hey, I know we're a long way out, but let's go ahead and get everything that we need. Let's get that done right away. This week, we will close on the $2.5 million loan that you've approved um, so we can begin construction right away here. Our general contractor is telling us to expect construction to begin in late March, which will still put us on the target, ready for this, that we will launch Trinity Church East Mesa in September 11, 2022, and we will grand reopen this location, September 11, 2022, one church in two locations. How exciting is that? We're on target to do all those things. We've already made our commitments to the Timothy Initiative to go plant 400 churches. 
or making our commitments to Togo Palms and to our other outreach partners. God is doing something so cool. So some of you are like, okay, what, do I, what does that mean? What do you want us to do with this? Two things. Number one, I need you to pray. Pray for favor. Pray these supply chain shortages don't affect us, that we can launch. Pray for favor with the Cream Creek um, School District. We're in conversations right now about some doing some really cool things over in East Mesa. Pray for that. And then number two, if you're not on the, on the team yet, you haven't jumped on, like jump on. Don't let this thing pass you by. And again, it's never about a dollar amount, just so we, just so we know. It's about all of us doing our part and together, all of us doing our part, that's when we can make an incredible difference. And so keep doing what you're doing. Keep loving, keep serving, keep giving, keep praying. And I know this, that one day we're gonna look back and we're gonna be thankful that we did all that we could with the time that we had the same way that Jesus has done for us. Amen, everybody. Can we just one more time, praise God for what he's doing around here. It's amazing, we're so grateful so grateful. All right. If you haven't already, get your sermon notes out. They're inside that worship guide or they are on that app. And today I'm really excited to begin the series, Five Words That Will Change Your, that change your Life. And here's the big idea of this series. Are you ready for it? We just believe that some simple words with the help of the Holy Spirit, some simple words can actually change your life. And you're going to find out that these words are really, really practical. And today I'm going to give you the most practical word. It's the word yes. It's the word yes. Think about it. Some of the most important, amazing things in your life, they were preceded by the word yes. You're a teenager and you ask your driver instructor, did I pass the test? And he said, yes. Some of you, I still don't know how you had like, him to say yes or her to say yes, but he, you said yes and your life completely changed. Some of you, you, your real estate agent asks, are you gonna buy this house? And you say, yes, your life changes. Are you going to accept the job? Yes, your life changes. Are you gonna ask that girl or that guy out on a date? Yes, your life changes. Are you pregnant? Are the Cardinals ever gonna win another game? I mean, that would change a lot of your lives. I, I can feel it. The most important decisions, impactful areas of your life were preceded by the word yes. I, I've shared this story before, but my wife needs to be reminded of this from time to time. But on September 29, 2006, I asked Amanda Panulo if she would marry me. Now, I was in college or grad school in Texas. She was in college in Rhode Island. So we were doing the long distance thing. And so I had to plan an elaborate proposal to convince her to marry me. I mean, I just had to go all out. So with the help of her mom, I snuck in a flight. She had no idea that I was coming into Rhode Island. Her mom helped me get all the candles, all the roses, got our favorite food from our favorite sushi place there in Rhode Island. I mean, we went all out and I set their house up. It was bananas, all the candles, all the flowers. It was out of a scene from, from a movie. Amanda comes home from work and she worked at CVS at the time. She had a white trench coat because she was the pill counter for CVS. And so I, I could see her, but she couldn't see me. And so she walks in with that white coat and she puts her keys down and the music is playing and the candles are lit and the flowers are everywhere. You get the picture. And I hear her say, oh my goodness, what's happening? And she walks into the living room and there I am. And I get down on my knee and I make the speech of my life. And I ask her, Amanda Panulo, will you marry me? And she says, yes, and bam, and woo! I mean, for all of that trouble, all the money that I spent on that flight, the candles, the roses, the food, all that, could you imagine if she would have said no? Here's the thing. I knew she was gonna say yes. I knew it. She's been dropping subtle hints for months. <laughs> One subtle hint she dropped me was, hey, um, when are you finally gonna ask me to marry you? That was my favorite. <laughs> and the second one was she literally handed me a picture of the ring that she wanted me to buy. 
How many of you know rings in like wedding catalogs are not cheap? It's like, this is what I want. It's exactly how I want it. I knew, I knew she was going to say yes. Paul is writing to the Corinth church. It's his second letter to them. And here's what he says about Jesus. For the son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us. And then he says, this is, this is who preached it. Uh, I did and Silas and Timothy. Just so you know, Corinth church, it was not yes and no, but in him, in Jesus, it has always been yes. Amen. It's always been yes. So what, what does that mean? What, what Paul is saying is, hey, you don't have to worry today if God loves you, it's yes. You don't have to worry if he wants to be in a relationship with you, it's yes. You don't have to worry if he's gonna forgive you, it's yes. All of those things aren't based upon his mood or his temperament. It's always been, always will be. It is yes, it's yes. In the same way that I knew that Amanda was gonna say yes when I asked her to marry me, you can take it to the bank that it's always been yes with God. Amen. Which, bothers, which begs the question, then why bother Jared? Why go into all that trouble? Why not just send Amanda a text message and say, hey, you wanna get married? That would have saved you a lot of money and a lot of time. Here's, here's why. I went to all that trouble, not to twist her arm to force her to marry me. I went into all that trouble because I loved her. In the same way, we know that God says yes to us. In the same way of why we're gonna do these 21 days of prayer and fasting, of why we come to church to hear from God, of, of why we read our Bible, all those, we don't do those things to make him love us. We do those things, we obey him because of our love for him. Amen. It's always been yes. He's all, already said yes to you. And now the question of the morning is, will you say yes to him? Will you say yes to him? The next verse, Paul says in verse 20, all the promises of God find their yes in him. Over 7,300 promises are in the Bible. And when you give your life to Jesus through faith, you get access to all of them. You're saved, you're forgiven, you have a home in heaven. All of those things are available to you. Amen. He's already said yes. The question is, Will you say yes to him? Yes. And as we begin the new year, I wanna give you three things this morning. I want you to write these down in your notes. Three things that you need to say yes to God as we begin the year. You ready for it? Tell me yes if you're ready. Are you ready for it? Yes. All right, here we go. Here's the first thing you need to say yes to God for is say yes to who God says we are. You need to say yes to who God says you are. I think so many of us, we live our lives based upon what other people say about us instead about who God says we are. I, I, I'm always baffled by this, but we're obviously, Grace and my, my middle child played tackle football this year. And Amanda and I were shocked by some of the things that parents would say, not just to each other, but what they would say to their kids. I can remember being at an away game and Grayson's game hasn't started yet and watching the other game finish ahead of us. And I'm there and there's this dad sitting behind me and he yells out to his son. I didn't know who he was. He says, hey, Noah, his son, stop being soft for just once in your life. I mean, I looked at little Noah and I mean, I could tell that he didn't love football like the rest of them, but he was trying his best. But in that moment, it was like the wind was just taken out of his sails. So embarrassed. I mean, his spirit was utterly crushed. I mean, can you imagine that? You hearing your dad say like, hey, I'm embarrassed by you. You're not good enough. You're soft. You're weak. <laughs> imagine growing up in a home like that. Noah, 30, 40 years from now, all he's gonna think is I'm soft, I'm weak, I'm a nobody. I'm such a disappointment, I'm, I'm an embarrassment. Hey, hey dad, this isn't part of the sermon, but you need to hear this. That is one of the most crushing things that you could ever say to your kids. 
It has no place in the people of God. You are to build your children up, not to tear them down. But some of you, you know exactly what it's like for little Noah. You had a parent, you had a coach, or maybe you had a mean kid in school and they gave you a label. And your whole life you think, I'm weak, I'm soft. I'm ugly, I'm fat. I'm not good with anybody, I'm terrible. I don't even know why I exist. That's the label that you have on you. And here's the thing, I know it's real and I know it's painful, but the only thing that I know that can cure the label that somebody else has put on you is you need to allow the creator who, put, who formed you in your mother's womb. He knit you together, the Bible say. You need to allow him to tell you who he thinks you are. Amen. And just in case you forgot, here's some things. And I have them in your notes because I need you to look at these. You need to begin 2022. Some of you, you're gonna shed the label that's always been on you of ugly, of fat, of weak, of messed up, of a mistake. You need to shed that label and you need to hear what God thinks about you. Here's what he says. He says, you're more than a conqueror. You're not weak, you're not soft. You're more than a conqueror. You're his child, you're his beloved child. Other people may have abandoned you, but he's never abandoned you. You're a new creation. You're love, here's the thing. He knows everything about you and he loves you anyway. No matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, there's a God in heaven who loves you like crazy. And here's the thing, he calls you a citizen of heaven. Not a citizen of this earth, a citizen of heaven. Here's some more, you just need to know these, that he calls you righteous and holy, co-heirs with Jesus, chosen by God. He's a, you're a friend of God, think about that. The creator of the universe looks at each and every one of you and calls you his friend. You're God's workmanship. You know what's not on this list? Weak, soft, Fat, ugly, you can't, you can't find it. Shed the label that you've allowed other people to put on you or you've put on yourself. And I would just tell you, begin every day, cut it out of your notes, put it on your mirror, allow people, allow yourself to see this and be reminded of this every single day of who God says you are. So often, we, our identity and our value, it, it comes from what the world says is popular, what the world says is cool. Let me, let me prove it to you. Finish this sentence in your mind. You feel the most value or the most respect or whatever the case is when people notice what about you? That, that's different for everybody, but what is that? You feel most value when Maybe some of you would say, oh, it's when people notice my physique, my figure, my muscles, my fitness. That's when I'm most valued. Others of you would say, oh, it's my position. It's how much money I make. It's the office that I have. It's the platform that I get to be on. It's when people notice that, that's where my value comes from. Uh, others of you, maybe you're in school and you would say, oh, it's my popularity how many likes I get on Instagram or on Facebook. It's, it's actually how good I am at sports. When people compliment me on that, that's where my value comes from. Or others of you, you would be honest enough and you would say, oh, it's my kids. <laughs> my kid, my identity is wrapped up in being a mom or being a dad, or it's my marriage. And here's the thing, there's nothing bad about those things. But all those things that I just mentioned, they can be taken away like that, all of them. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised health. You're not promised relationships. All of those things can be taken away like that, but we spend all of our time and all of our focus getting our identity and our value from things that have really no lasting meaning. It's time that we shed those labels and we allow God to tell us who he thinks that we are and allow that to be the driving force of our identity and our value. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but somebody in 2022, you need to find your value and who God says you are. This week, as we begin 21 days of prayer and fasting, I need you to read the book of Ephesians, one chapter a day. There's six chapters, so you get a day to skip. Five minutes, read one chapter every day in the book of Ephesians, and ask yourself this question. 
who does God say that I am? And every day, be reminded of who God says you are and you need to say yes to it and you need to hold nothing back. Here's number two. Am I helping anybody today? Is this helpful for anyone? Here's number, here's number two. You need to say yes to what God tells us to do. Say yes to what God tells us to do. I love this quote from a pastor, Adam Weber. He says this, that one of the clearest ways I can see if someone is growing in their relationship with God is that person's willingness to say yes to God, to big things, to small things, and particularly to things that don't make sense or are out of one's comfort zone. Let that sink in for a moment. Some of you, you need to say yes to the things that God is asking you to do. One of my favorite devotionals is written by a guy named Oswald Chambers. It's called My Utmost for His Highest. And one of the many chapters in that devotional is called Yes, dot, 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 but. Like Christians are notorious for saying, yes, God, I'll go where you want me to go, but <laughs> not there. Yes, God, I'll, I'll forgive, but not that person. Yes, God, I'll give, but not that amount. Yes, but. Here's what he says in this incredible chapter. If you're a follower of Jesus, he demands that you risk everything you hold on to and you leap by faith into what he says. Oh, let that sink in. Jesus Christ demands that you risk everything you hold on to and leap by faith into what he says. Some of you, this is the year where you start. That for so long, your faith journey has been yes, but, or maybe you never even said yes. And this is the year where you're like, okay, I'm all in. I'm not doing the hokey pokey thing anymore, like one foot in, one foot out. Like I'm all in, I'm gonna dance myself around. Amen. Some of you, this needs to define who you are. So let me just tell you, start today, start. Start the 21 days of prayer and fasting. I don't care what you fast. Fast TV, fast sports, fast social media, fast alcohol, fast sugar, I don't care. Fast, fast a meal, fast. Disconnect from the world and connect with God. That's what fasting is, just fast. Start that. Some of you this year, you, you need to start seeing that counselor. You've been pretending on social media that everything is fine, but it's not. You need to start. Some of you, you need to start rehab. You know, you know it, start. Some of you, this is the year you need to start writing that book. God has put a, a fire inside of you. This is the year, start. Start reading your Bible. Start coming to church every single week, hearing from God. Some of you, you need to start. This is the year, some of you, you need to start eating healthy and exercising and losing all of that weight. Stop making excuses and start. I love this verse. Zachariah says, do not despise the small beginnings because that's what you're saying. Oh, this isn't a big deal. I'm a nobody. I'm weak, I'm soft, I can't start. No, no, don't despise the small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Start. It's not too small. You can begin today. You need to say yes to what God is asking you to do. And here's the third yes that will change your life. And it's the most important but you need to say yes to the gift that God wants to give. You need to say yes to the gift that God wants to give. You know, when I was a college pastor back in Michigan, and I still get this question quite a bit, but I was asked this question a lot. They would say, hey, Jared, like, why? Like, why do like really good moral people who, who believe differently than us, they're good, they're good family people, they just believe differently than us, like why don't they go to heaven? But somebody who can be mean and ornery and grouchy in the end of his life, give their life to Jesus and believe like us and they get to go to heaven, like why is that? I always answer, I say, I don't know why. Like I, I, I'm not the judge, don't know people's soul. 
but I know God has talked a lot about it. In, in the Bible, the book of Romans, there's this thing called the Romans road. It's how I like to talk to people. It's about God's incredible gift for them. And I answer it by saying this, hey, listen, the truth is all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. Like not one of us could stand on this stage today and say, my resume is good. None of us could. All have sinned and we've all fallen short of the perfect standard. All of us. And because of that, the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. But what's a wage? A wage is what you earn. I go to work, I get paid a wage. Well, your sin, because we've fallen short, none of us are good enough. Well, we all deserve death. And that's just really quick in this verse because Paul gets to the good news. He says, but the gift of God, this is why I've entitled it, you need to say yes to the gift that God wants to give you. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now what's a gift? You don't earn a gift. You don't even deserve a gift. A gift, you just need, you just need to receive it. So many people, they treat heaven like a country club. Well, if I'm, if I'm good enough, if I pay my way, then when I get to heaven, I'll, I'll have access into heaven because of the life that I lived. I was good enough. And here's the problem with good enough is that's so subjective because all we're doing is comparing it to somebody else. I'm better than him. I'm better than her, I think. I don't really know them, but I think I'm better. If we treat heaven like the country club, earn our way in, give our way in, we'll think that's access. Paul says, actually, it's none of those things. This doesn't make any sense. It's believing through Jesus Christ. It says he is the gift of God. It's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our, our Lord. That's how you gain access into heaven. It's the greatest gift. And some of you need to say yes to that gift. A couple years ago, after Christmas, in between New Year, uh, we took our family to California and I cashed in a bunch of points and we stayed at a really nice hotel and they put us on the top level and they have access to this concierge room right next door. It's where you have to have your card and somebody's there and they, they double check to make sure that you have access into this room. And when you go into that room, everything is free. I mean, we pay for it in other ways, but you get the point. My little kids, man, they thought it was the coolest thing. We would walk into that concierge room and they would literally clean the place out. And they would look at me, you know how parents look at other parents with a judgment look? And I'd be like, yeah, I know. It's their first time, probably their last time. Deal with it. I mean, all the breakfast, all the lunch. And then at night they would have dessert and happy hour. And every time we'd walk in and my kids would just flash that card, boom, concierge level, and they would wipe them out. And every time they ask us, daddy and mommy, can we go back there? Can we go back there? Can we go back there? That was amazing. Now, now how did my kids have access to that concierge room? Because of me. Because they were with me. They knew me. In the same way, we're going to stand before the Lord one day and we're going to give an account for our life. And he's going to ask us, why do you belong? Why should you have access into heaven? And some of you are going to say, well, it's my resume. I did more good things than bad things. I was really well behaved. I gave a lot of money. That one life movement, I gave a lot of money to that. Like, that's why I belong. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to stand before the Lord. I'm going to pick myself off. The reason why I belong, I'm going to look at Jesus and I'm going to say, it's because I, I know him. I'm with, I'm with him. Here's the last verse of this Romans road. If you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Oh, I love this. It says, you will be saved. Amen. Here, here's what he's saying, here's what he's saying. God has already said yes to you. It's right here. 
He loved you so much that he sent his only son to die on a cross to pay a price that you could never pay. He's already said yes to you. Here's the question. Will you say yes to him? A few years ago, the beloved evangelist and preacher who's preached to more people ever in history, Billy Graham passed away. And at his funeral, his daughter gave a testimony of her relationship with her father. And as we close this morning, I want you to watch this incredible story of Billy Graham and his daughter. Take a look. I want to thank each one of you for being here today, from those in the very back here in the tent to the very front row. We are blessed and honored that you are here. Thank you. After 21 years, my marriage ended in divorce. I was devastated. I floundered. I did a lot wrong. The rug was pulled out from under me. My family thought it'd be a good idea for me to move away, to get a fresh start somewhere else. So I decided to live near my older sister and her family and near a good church. The pastor of that church introduced me to a handsome widower and we began to date fast and furiously. My children didn't like him, but I thought, you know, they were almost grown. They didn't know what they could, they couldn't tell me what to do. I knew what was best for my life. My mother called me from Seattle. My father called me from Tokyo. They said, honey, why don't you slow down? Let us wait to get to know this man. They had never been a single parent. They had never been divorced. What did they know? So being stubborn, willful, and sinful, I married a man, this man, on New Year's Eve. And within 24 hours, I knew I'd made a terrible mistake. After five weeks, I fled. I was afraid of him. What was I going to do? I wanted to go talk to my mother and my father. It was a two-day drive. Questions swirled in my mind. What was I going to say to daddy? What was I going to say to mother? What was I going to say to my children? I'd been such a failure. What were they going to say to me? You, we, we're tired of fooling with you. We told you not to do it. You've embarrassed us. And let me tell you, you women will understand you don't want to embarrass your father. You really don't want to embarrass Billy Graham. <laughs> and many of you know that we live on the side of a mountain. And as I wound myself up the mountain, I rounded the last bend in my father's driveway, and my father was standing there waiting for me. As I got out of the car, he wrapped his arms around me and he said, welcome home. There was no shame, there was no blame, there was no condemnation, just unconditional love. And you know, my father was not God, but he showed me what God was like that day. When we come to God with our sin, our brokenness, our failure, our pain and our hurt, God says, welcome home. And that invitation is open for you. God is like. Some of you would say, oh, not my dad. I would have pulled into that driveway and it would have been shame and judgment and you're weak and you're soft. He would have given me another label. You need to hear this today that there is a perfect, a perfect heavenly father that knows everything about you and he loves you anyway. And he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross to pay the price for you and for me. Don't miss it. He has already said yes to you. Will you say yes to him? With every head bowed and every eye closed and online, I'm gonna encourage you to turn off every distraction. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you today. 
And some of you are here, you're in the room and you would say, Jared, I am so far from God. Oh, Jared, I don't even know where to begin. I've given up on God. Listen to me, he, he's never given up on you. I don't even know if I believe in him. Well, he believes in you. And today you simply need to respond. In the quietness of this room, nobody's looking around. We're never going to embarrass you. It's not about joining this church, but some of you would just say, pastor today, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to say yes to him. What well, if that's you? I wanna pray for you. If you would be so brave right now in this moment, again, nobody's looking around, but just say, today, Jared, I need to say yes to God. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand that I can pray for you all over this room to say, Pastor, today, I need to give my life to Jesus. Come on, right where you are, high enough for me to see it, long enough for me to recognize it. Yeah, God bless you and you. Somebody else will say, Pastor, that's me. In the back, way to go. I'm so proud of you. All over this room. Come on, right where you are. You're, you're saying yes to Jesus right now. Pray this prayer, put it in your own words. Say, today, God, I am sorry. I'm sorry for going my own way. I'm sorry for keeping you at a distance. But today, as simply as I know how, oh, tell them this. Say, I give my life to you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. Paying the price I could never pay. Giving me a hope and giving me a future. Today, I respond to that and I give my life fully to him. Others of you, you don't need to pray that prayer, but maybe this is the beginning. You need to pray a prayer of dedication and say, I'm dropping the labels that people have put on me. I'm gonna drop it, lay it on the floor. Don't pick it up. That is not who you are in Jesus' name. I'm gonna be filled with faith today. Renew your purpose. I'm gonna receive all that he has for you. Others of you, you need to say yes to what God's asking you to do. Start that class, go to rehab, get that counselor, start attending church every week, start reading your Bible, just say yes. He does not despise the small beginnings. Now, Holy Spirit, you know every person that's in this room. Some today, they've just prayed the prayer to receive you, to say yes to you. Others, we're saying yes to where you're sending us. Others of, of us in the room, we're dropping the labels of our past that will no longer define who we are in Jesus' name. But we just say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in the life of your people. And as we begin this new year, it's a prayer of dedication, God, would you pour out your blessing? Would you pour out your favor? So much so that it goes to overflowing and we can't even contain it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Come on church, celebrate with me all over this room online, those who just said yes to Jesus. Man, if, if you just prayed that prayer, like way to go. We're, we're so excited today that you made a decision to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And do me a favor, uh, take out that connection card that's inside that worship guide. Check the box. Today I'm giving my life to Jesus or I'm recommitting my life to Christ. Uh, wherever you are on that journey, we wanna celebrate with you. And again, it's the same hassle-free guarantee. We're never gonna come knocking on your door. We just simply wanna give you some really clear next steps. Um, here at Trinity Church. And talking about next steps, uh, we have a thing here called the growth track. It's a two-step process that will help you know God, find a friend, discover your purpose, make a difference. I can't think of a better week. First Sunday of January, jump on the growth track, get connected, start figuring out your way around here. Today can be your day. As soon as you leave, right in the lobby, our team will greet you, answer all the questions that you have. We'd love for you to take your next step here today. And also church, right now, we are going to worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Aren't you excited to do that today? We cheer for it because God loves a cheerful giver. We serve a give first God. We're gonna be a give first people. So however you give in the boxes in the back, online, through the app, thank you for your amazing and thank you for your continued generosity here at Trinity. Um, hey, before I send you out, 
Um, I'm going to ask um, Alexandra, if you will, yes, please, thank you, um, to come out on stage um, with me. Um, and many of you know um, Alexandra as one of our worship leaders here. Doesn't she do an amazing job, everybody? Um, Alexandra um, married Sean. Now, Sean serves on our residency here. Um, and back in October, married, um, recently found out that they're expecting their first child. Pretty exciting. And with that, Alex has been very honest about her desire to live close to family and her family lives in Arkansas. And so we kind of been talking about it for a couple of months and over Christmas break, God just seemed to have put all of the dots together of housing and new jobs and all of those things in Arkansas. And so everybody, um, it's with a sad heart, but I'm really excited for them that next Sunday will be Alexandra's last weekend leading us in worship. I hope you feel that, like they're so sad because you've done such an amazing job and, and everybody, I want you to love on them and Sean and just honor them for the work that they've done. Two and a half years, Alexandra served here on our team. And honestly, she's done an incredible job during some really difficult times, during COVID and transitioning everything. And she's gone above and beyond. And from our heart to you, we love you. We're so grateful for you. Next week, we're gonna celebrate you again, but I wanted them to know so they can love on you a little bit. And Sean, River Sean's probably serving in some area right now, but we're so grateful for you and your husband and thankful for, for the, the days ahead um, in Arkansas. So church, can we just again, celebrate her and honor her and Sean and thank her, amazing. Thank you. So it's disappointing news, um, but here's the thing. God has been working behind the scenes and I'll talk about this in the days to come. Um, we have some new team members coming on board with us um, in the next couple of weeks and months to join our worship team. And, uh, but I don't wanna talk about that right now. I just want you to know we, we're, we're good. Um, but the next couple of weeks, will you do me a favor and will you love on Alexandra and Sean and just tell them how much you appreciate all, all the work that they've done around Trinity Church. Hey, I wanna ask you to stand to your feet all over the room. I wanna pray a quick blessing over you. Um, if this is your first time today at Trinity, thanks for being here. My wife and I will be down front for a few moments. We'd love to shake your hand. We'd love to welcome you to church today. Um, and if you need prayer for any reason, we'll have prayer partners down front. Um, we'd love to pray with you and we would love to pray for you. Let me pray. God, again, I thank you for the amazing people of Trinity Church. And I pray that we will have the most amazing Sunday afternoon that we've ever had. And the Cardinals will win one more game. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I love you. Keep coming back. We'll see you next weekend. God bless you.